facts. And now we present to you America's quintessential iconoclastic anomaly. Wow. In talk radio, your host, Joe Cristiano. Welcome, everyone, to Liberty Talk Radio. I'm your host, Joe Cristiano. We're broadcasting from our studio in Tulsa, Oklahoma, to around the world. This is your Libertarian station. Today, we are pleased to have Bobby Centoro, uh, Centoro with us. Uh, he's in Sonora. I'm sorry, Sonora. I'm awfully sorry. See, my Italianist came out on me, Centoro. Anyway, yeah, but, it's, 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 <laughs> did I pronounce that even close, Bobby? It, well, it's like Brazilian Portuguese. It's Sonora. It's it means um, it means carrot in Brazilian in Portuguese. Oh, I Bobby the carrot, Senora. Okay, yeah, all right. I got, I got that, <laughs> okay, I, Joe. Listen, I I really I apologize for I was I was giving someone some official information and like you know I was put on hold for such a damn long time. You know, in the government, they put you on hold for a long time, and so I was giving them some information. So I'm just giving them a date real quick. Uh, today is the eighth. So okay, let me just say this. All right. While you're looking that up, let me finish the introduction, Bobby. Uh, Bobby is an African American literary artist, born and raised in the Washington D.C. metropolitan area. Senora writes about topics that inspire conversation and thought, and currently has one screenplay and TV series concept under his belt. Today, we will be discussing his latest book, The Black Names Book, wherein he discusses and analyzes the origins of black names and how they affect those who adopt them. Bobby, thank you so much for being on our program. Is he there? there? Uh, Bobby, did you disappear on us? Yeah, yeah, I'm here, I'm here. Oh, okay, all (laughs) righty. I was speaking to you, I didn't hear it back. Can you hear me pretty well? What'd you say, Joe? Sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Is our connection okay? All right. We just want to make sure everything's all right so we don't go halfway through the program and find out that no one can hear what we were talking about. Well, thank you so much for being on our program. And and this topic is very close to me, very close to my heart, um, because uh, I, I'm a street kid from Harlem, New York, and I lived in the Bronx. So... Um, None of this is new to me, although back in the old, old days, back in the 1950s, Uh, that is. That's it, for now. Okay, we... Yeah, he's on on hold with someone else right now. Oh, okay. Are you on hold with someone else, Bobby? Yeah, somewhat. I'm almost done. I'm like so so close. Okay. 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 We'll just wait. Okay, thank you. This is an all-time first, folks. You're getting entertained here, but uh, I, man, I, okay, I'm finally done, man. Joe, okay. man, they had me on hold. I am sorry, Joe. That's um, quite all right. I apologize, man. This, these people. It's just like I was waiting. So, in I was waiting for like um, I don't know how many how many minutes, and I was sitting here. I just uh, got off. I had spoke to. I did a dry one, a run with uh, Sally on the Skype thing. And uh, and so I was here prepared, and so I had, I just put my phone on my I had to contact um, I had to contact my uh, local government and <sighs> okay we'll, we'll and let that be at that we, we I know you're frustrated with them so was the rest of the world join yes. the club yes. I was just mentioning right. that this subject is really dear to my heart because uh, uh, I, I I I come from the streets of Harlem New York East Harlem New York. And um, um, uh, names did matter when I was young. It was very different, uh, although it was um, it was primarily a white neighborhood, but it was racially mixed. Obviously, in New York, there is no pure white neighborhood or pure black. You know, unless I guess you're in the Fifth Avenue area where you're paying three million dollars for an apartment. But uh, and, and even then, they're, they're racially mixed as well. I shouldn't even say that. But uh, but everyone had nicknames, which was kind of neat because. To this day, whenever I'm introduced to someone, I convert their names to a nickname. I'll give you an example. Um, my friend George, his, his or one of his best friends was Nicky Beans. And then on the 116th Street, there was Louis Fish Eyes. <laughs> and my nickname was Joey Popcorn. Could you imagine me being called Joey Popcorn? Because I was always popping off, you know. And everyone had <laughs> nicknames. So, you know, although we grew up with those names and, uh, you know, people reference us by those names, um, you, 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 that wasn't the way you identified yourself 
outside of your very, very close community. Once you walked out of your community, you became Joe, Bob, Frank, or whatever your name was. And I guess this is very different. So I'd, I'd like to know, I'm curious, what inspired you to write this book, you know, and, and what is, um, what's the purpose and what's the intent of the book as, 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 as we go on? Well, first, Joe, I want to say, okay, now I've got my game face on. I actually, I've got, I, I've accepted your video so I can see you. You can put me on uh, the split screen if you want to. Okay. Uh, I, okay. I've accepted your video. So when I pop up, I guess I'll pop out. I don't know um, why I don't see myself in the corner. But anyway, <laughs> um, oh, wait, hold on. I think, I think this might, but here it is. Here it is. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. Okay. We're, we're back. You okay. You my bass pad. There we go. <laughs> Okay. All now, right. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, I had to close it. I didn't want you to see. I didn't, didn't see the dirty laundry. <laughs> I, I tell you, this is the most discombobulated uh, broadcast we've had in a long time. So, congratulations. You're, you're number one <laughs> in discombobulation. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Go on. Um, Joey. Joey, man. Joey. <laughs> Oh, I have to mention one thing because I'm, I'm proud of this. In, in you know, I sang doo-wop back in the '50s, and I still sing doo-wop. But, but uh, you know, back in the old old days, and um, I believe my group that I sang with was the first racially mixed group in New York. Uh, mm -hmm. We had a black lead, a Puerto Rican second tenor, Carlos, and. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, and I was the first tenor, and I was Italian anyway. But uh, and that was very unusual. And as a result of that, by the way, my father disowned me. Really? Would you believe? Yeah, yeah. He literally they threw me out of the house. <laughs> were you part? Were you part of that book? Were you part of that? You know, I heard that group called. Um, I don't remember the group, but they sing a really nice song I like. It's called Blue Moon. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, we never sang that. Blue Moon. Yeah, right. Sure. <laughs> ah, so you're standing alone. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. But they were we, we never mixed. sang that song because actually that song was a after my time, believe it or not. I, I uh -huh. predated that. Um, and oh, I won't go into the song so most people won't even recognize them except for people who were of the um, of that era and they'll remember every one of those songs and all the lyrics and all that so anyway but about your book what inspires you to write this it's fascinating and let me show you let me let me sh hold it up here's the book the black names uh, book and uh, the subtitle is dissecting and defining the origins of contemporary ghetto names take it away Bobby Okay, so first, the first thing I want to say is the reason why, um, the first thing I want to tell you about the book is that I have had the title, I changed the title to Black Names Matter, okay, to, uh, you know, to take advantage of the, uh, of the momentum right. of the Black slash Matter uh, things that are going on. Uh, for me, it was uh, simply a marketing choice, and also there's this thing with a, a new uh, I'm going with a new distribution system for the book um, using this distribution system called Ingram Spark, and uh, and there there's a there's a particular uh, a target there's a particular um, venue uh, outlet that I want to uh, pitch my book to, and they don't accept books on Amazon. So oh, what I, I did was I I made right the content of the book is generally the same. It's a little streamlined, uh, a little bit like a little. Some of the empty tables are taken out for the for the new edits, and right. I'll send you I'll send you the new uh, when it comes out. I'll send you the black names, the black names matter, and then the black names book. And then I took the I took the subtitle out because it might confuse people, or you know you know dissecting and defining the origins of contemporary. Like it's a mouthful. It is. You know, it is. black names matter. Whoa, <laughs> you know, like you know, like, <laughs> you know, like you know, so. Um, but what inspired me to write the book was there's a few things that inspired me. First of all, a little bit of background by myself. I am African-American and African. OK, so my father was from West Africa. I see. He was from, he was from a country called Liberia, West Africa. He was a native of that country. So the African culture is different than the African-American culture. Right. It's, it's different. It's a, it's a different cultural group. Right. And so. And I'm also African American because I was born and raised here. I with see. My mom's side of the family. Okay. So I, I was always kind of like that black sheep of my family. Pardon the pun. <laughs> I was also the darkest. One in my family. <laughs> I was also the darkest one in my family. And um, I'm I'm a person that 
a, I'm a person that you have to be, I'm more logical than I am emotional. So when people talk to me about certain things and they talk to me about race, I don't care. Because at the end of the day, it's just how people identify themselves. I go with what George Carlin said when he talked about race. It's not something I created. So I'm proud of things that I created myself. That's a you good point. Right. Yeah. I love George Carlin. So, yeah. Right. 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 It's, it's, well, it's, that's the gist. That's, I'm paraphrasing what he said. But essentially, right. said, there's a Puerto Rican Day parade. There's an Irish parade. There's Italian, whatever it is. But, you know, why are you proud to be that when you didn't create it yourself? It's just something that they said, oh, you popped out of the womb. This is what you are. This is how you navigate. OK, right. so I've always been a navigator, especially in the African-American community. See, what a lot of people don't know, or what a lot of people do know, but a lot of folks are afraid to say if they're not African-American, which I'm going to be the mouthpiece for the people, is basically there's a dirty there's a there's a dirty laundry that we the Af people who are african americans know but they don't acknowledge when people of other races say this to african americans about what african americans are going through including these black names now the black names book was inspired because it just hit me one day i was i was i was watching um it was either i was watching with uh, america's got talent or one of these shows, and there was a guy on there. He was he was a young black kid. He was he, he sung his lungs. He boy, that kid had some pipes, man. <laughs> and I was like, what? and I saw the name of the Bible. I said, what? Oh, Quintavious. Uh, was it Johnson? Quintavious Johnson. Quintavious. Hmm, that sounds kind of that sounds kind of Roman. Yeah, that's what I was just to say. It sounds like a Roman name, right? <laughs> a gladiator. Right? Like, He's a gladiator. Exactly. Like, like, so then I, I, I and then I started realizing these names. If you if you say the names by syllable, you can break them apart, and then you can find out what the real definition is. Because me being a, of of um, half like African origin, you know, you know, me like you know, not coming on the Middle Passage African American, but coming over on a plain African, right? Right. I know what African culture is, and I know how African names sound, and I know well, you know, I'm not saying all of Africa is a country, but I know West African people from Nigeria and. You know, the ancestors of African Americans in the United States tend to be from West Africa. Right. And those and the, and those those people's names sound a certain way. But when I hear Quintavious, <laughs> and I looked up, and I, yeah, you know, and I do so. I, so I know that Octavius means the eighth, or like the eighth born son. Or and uh, Quintus means the fifth. So essentially, what they did was they took Quintus and Octavius and smashed them together. Right. And you have Quintavious, and this is what I, in my book, what I call a um, concatenation or a name combo. Right. So you have names like that, like you have names like uh, Fran Doris, which is like a mixer, mixture between Fran or Francis and, and Doris. And you put the names together, you get Fran Doris. And so uh, also the name, the name, um, the, 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 the suffix Tavius is very popular or Tavius. So you have Latavius. You know, some you, you look up, look at, look, just look down the football roster, and you'll see some very creative names. But this comes from Octavius, and um, so I was inspired because it just hit me like a lightning bolt. I was like, wait a minute, there's a pattern here. And I looked. Did anyone ever do a, a book about this? And I said no. And I knew that there was um, some research that I had in the book that I got from Roland Fryer, uh, when he talked about how the the black names affect job prospects. Now I'm raised by two. Now I'm raised by my grandparents. Okay, and they're old school. My grandfather was from Alabama, and my grandma's from Missouri. And they're old school. Okay, and so they didn't name, you know, their kids these names. And as a matter of fact, um, both whites and blacks have the, the same names before the '60s. And so this this is this is a testament to my research. I see. So I wanted to see where black names in America or African American popular names did they have any basis in being African? And I found that they that the the lion's share did not. So I went in and I started getting names and I started looking up names and then I realized these names can be conjugated. So I think you looked at some of the tables. Yes, I did. I did several of them. Yes. Right. Right. So these names are conjugated. So so you can have a suffix and then you could conjugate you could conjugate the prefix. 
going down bounds. So if we take a name like Shaniqua, you know, Shaniqua is a popular one, right? Right, right. Right? That name Shaniqua can be Laniqua, Daniqua, Raniqua, Zaniqua, you know? And so I have conjugation tables. And what I did was as I was conjugating these names, I would just take the name that I thought it was, that I thought was a creative name based on the conjugation, take that name, put it into the Google search bar and go to images. And as soon as I saw somebody black, I was like, it's going in the book. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> now it's 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 interesting that I, I think in, in your book you you have mentioned that um, uh, the, the reason why the names became unique is because the a- African Americans were looking for an identity, and and instead of picking up names that were common in America, whether they be uh, European or whatever, um, th- there was a decision for some reason for them to make unique names to the black culture so that they would have a black identity. And um, this, although I applaud that in a way, but didn't tend to make them assimilate any better. In fact, created a, a, a thicker wall of segregation in, in many cases. Is, is that, am I, am I verbalizing that properly? Joe, first of all, you don't gotta pull any punches with me. I don't, because I don't, you know, I don't, you know, I don't get like that. Remember I told you, right? I'm going to tell you straight up. These names that you hear, that you see there, black names, first of all, hurt people, hurt people. Yeah. The, 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 the types of things that African Americans went through with segregation, things like that, kind of led them to be separate and I don't, I don't want to say embrace being separate because the thing about it is, is this, and I know I, I don't want to go too much off on the tangent. I don't want to do that, but I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to really exp- I'm, take what you said and put it in the way I see it because I agree what you're saying, but the way I want to explain it to you is, is that when a per, when you, you can go to any country and see that there are different class levels in every country. Uh, America is great because you can you can come from nothing, next to nothing, and if you add value, you can work your way up. And you can right. you might not you okay. Granted, yes, I, I when people say, well, you know, you know, there's white supremacy and blah blah. I said, listen, well, granted, own group preference is a way that human beings used to survive for millennia. If you take your ass back to Africa. The, the ruling tribe is going to look at you like another group. Only in America, we just have different colors. And so we have we break up our groups in, in different colors right. of people or different languages, right? For example, Latinos or Hispanics, right? They're not really a race. That's right. They're just mixed people who are speaking Spanish and have a Roman Catholic religion. Generally. Right. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? Right, exactly. Right? So, but a lot of people don't know how to break things into smaller pieces without getting emotionally attached because that's what they use to survive so in the in the in the instance where the african americans were going through the civil rights movement they started choosing a lot of muslim names because and from my research and from who i've talked to in my own experience they said well you know well islam is an african religion Christianity was looked at as a European religion. Correct. Therefore, we want to embrace Islam. So we want to name our kids like Sharif and Malik and, you know, Tariq and, you know, I'm saying Jamal and Jamil and stuff like that, right? But you see, here's the thing. And this is an art this is one of the articles I wrote. The logic the logic there is lopsided because if they did their research, they would know that there was an Arab African slave trade before the Middle Passage. Wow. So embrace so embracing Islam as an African embracing Arabic names is really is really you're just you know what what's the word I'm looking for you're just you're basically just you know you're just bullshitting yourself oh, excuse me I don't know if I can discuss it. but you're just BSing you you're BSing your you're b you're you're BSing yourself you're trying to rob Peter to pay Paul you say well let me let me um let me say, well, I'm not going with the white man has. Let me take the Arabic name. And then, you know, the Arab was holding you down, too. Right. 
and you and your people were sold into slavery by other ethnic groups in Africa. Essentially, the the bloodline has become, uh, you know, prisoners of war, right? So there is a painful history. However, the, what makes us human beings different from animals is that we're able to stop repeating the same behavior if we know it's not getting us anywhere. Right. Right. So the the data that was shown in, and a lot of African Americans know this because if you watch the movie, and I quoted it in my book, Coach Carter, where the woman said, "Yeah, I'm gonna name my baby." Um, Loquisha, and then her friend says, "Well, you might as well name the baby Food Stamps." You know what I'm saying? And it's a black person, right? Right? African Americans acknowledge that these names are socioeconomically lower income names, where there's high rates of crime in those areas, and to to survive in those areas, people have to be a certain kind of way. Right now. There are some African Americans, like myself and others, that call it what it is, and say, "Okay, if you choose to name your kid this name, and you and you know that this name uh, might close doors because there's data that says there's 50 percent of um, of callbacks on resumes. Uh, they get 50 percent of callbacks on resumes for having a a black name, and there are African Americans that I've, you know the research that I put in the book that have taken measures to whiten." their resumes, if you know that you're going to have to go through all that to get your foot in the door, why then would you name your baby this name? And the solution I put in one of my, one of my, in the book was, why don't you just make it a middle name? That's right. You yeah. know, why don't you just, why make don't you just make it, it, yeah, it a middle yeah, name? Yeah, make it an initial, you know, that, you know, John W, whatever, you know, whatever the middle name is, and that you can just use this as initial. Because usually they don't even ask you for your last middle name; they ask you for your initial, and then, you know, and no one usually asks what, what's your middle name. It, it really doesn't right. make any difference at that point, you know, but because you're right. not going to be referred to as such. Right, and so like it, it will be the same thing as if some guy named Cooter McGee. <laughs> <laughs> when it, you, know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you see, what it is is that what I've noticed is that African Americans tend to, and on a large scale, they tend to uh, take uh, very um, liberal platforms and adhere to a, a mainstream liberal narrative that has been assigned to them by the mainstream liberal um, media. And they tend to mix class and race together in a, a gumbo of mumbo jumbo. Yeah, yeah. So if I make, if I if, 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 if a white person says that's ghetto, right? Which ghetto, then we're not talking about the ghettos in the not in, in Nazi Germany. We're talking about, you know, something is lower income, something is low, low, low quality. It's a slang term for something that's low quality. You know, black people go around talking ghetto, like say, that's ghetto all day. The white person says, well, that's ghetto. Well, are you being racist? Well, no, you're not being racist if you say that's ghetto. Because ghetto is a testament to class. Now, just because African Americans tend to have lower incomes on average doesn't necessarily mean that we're saying that it's black. We're just saying that that action is ghetto. And a lot of African Americans do derive their identity from a lower income culture that was brought from the southern United States in migrations north. Yeah. They don't have to identify with that, but for some reason they choose to identify with that. And I believe that's because they were given uh, a story to embrace. Yeah. And I and my and when I talk to people, I always say, you have the freedom to choose what you what you plan to take on or what you plan to leave behind. And if you choose to take on a, nar a victim narrative, and you say, well, you know what, people should, in in all in, in in all actuality, people should should say, okay, there's a name on the resume. It doesn't matter what the name is. Let me see if the person's qualified. They should do that. But they don't. So right. if you know that they don't, if you know that that's reality, then you need to be aware of that reality. Right. My book was not actually, I actually didn't make my book for black people, actually. I didn't. That's some interesting. Like, some, oh, I, I, did. I, I thought, I thought that's, that, that, that was your focus, is saying, hey guys, wake up. Uh, just like they, they called me Joey Popcorn in Harlem, when I applied for the job, I didn't put down Joey Popcorn, I put down Joe. <laughs> You know, right, right. and and I, I left I left the popcorn back in Harlem. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Or or you or you left the popcorn for the weekends. Yeah, right. You got together with your boys, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. 
and you know people who can who can do this and and, and that's what you did navigate because italians went through discrimination irish went through discrimination puerto yeah. ricans went through Absolutely. discrimination yeah, right you know so everybody has a story the question is is that when you get when you go out there to earn or when you go out there to present yourself to the public what's paying who's who, who what you know you know what's going to earn you that income what's going to better right. your situation yeah so that is a, that's an that's an element of um of the black names book is to bring that to light and to and to also and to also show also the very interesting names and what they really mean yeah. well it, is this not akin to someone showing up for an interview uh let's say and they want to be a financial an, uh, analyst you know, or a mutual funds um, analyst or, or, or um, a representative, and 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 they show up in um, inappropriate attire, a tennis uniform, you their, anything. You, you know, with their pants hanging the off thing. their ass. I'm sorry. You mean with their pants hanging off their ass? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's the same thing. I mean, when, when you show up, you you want them to show up. You would dress as 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 the perception of a financial analyst would be you know it would be a pinstripe suit maybe maybe blue maybe gray um you know with a rep tie and you know that whole bit you know yeah. so you would you would play the part you stand a better chance um a few years ago um there was research done on what was the most um uh, um, um, accepted name in the world. In other words, the name of the highest caliber, you know. And uh, the name that came out, there was a female name, by the way. This is for female name. What was the highest level female name, if you will? And it happened to be Catherine, which was kind of surprising. And that's because, you know, the queens were named Catherine and all that. And it sort of was a carry-on. So um, they suggested that if you wanted your daughter to get ahead in life, you know, she stood a better chance if her name was Catherine rather than, you know, a, maybe a nickname. And it was interesting, and it's very close to akin to what your book says, but uh, in a different light. But it, it, it the, the purpose was the same. And I always, this is many, many years ago, and I, that that stayed with me for, for, for forever. And it's it's a shame that people don't identify. Um, if if they're going to show up for a job for a, as as a uh, in a corporation in management, they dress with a tie and whatever. They wouldn't show up in their jeans and their whatever you know their uh, uh, casual uh, outfit. So wh why is names uh, any different than that? Well, there is the there is the emotion of the situation, um, and I would just i would say based on what i've learned and i was so you know i thank god that um that i had my grandfather in my life you know he was a positive male figure in my life and um you know i think that growing up in these uh single family homes with the mom leading the family yeah. you know essentially the african the so-called black community is essentially a matriarch right and I've always I've always believed that you need two types of influences or energies if you want to be eclectic. Uh, you need a masculine and a feminine, and they need to be part. They, it's like good cop, bad cop, right? You know, the kids need to have someone to soften their tail, and then they need someone to say, "Okay, honey, now, 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 get in line." You know, here's some ice cream. So I think that balance. I think that. Um, that with the influx, and I didn't run any data. As a matter of fact, I used to be a financial analyst. Oh. I didn't run any data. <laughs> I did not know that, by the way. <laughs> right. Well, I could be an economic analyst, but if I run the data, I bet you I could find a correlation between between single mothers and the black, or the incidence of black names, or I could find a correlation between, uh, I could even find a correlation between, um, between, incarceration rates and and single parents single parent right. uh incidences yeah. or incidences of birth to a single mother or something like that i'm, I'm sure that could find a correlation yeah. between those two things i i i would i wouldn't be able to say causation and people can always bend see people like to bend words to suit what they like to say you know i'm i'm very real very general if if someone comes to me and they say 
hey man, you know those black guys or blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, okay, no, I'm, and I and I listen to what they say, and then, and then I I say, and then they ask me what I think. I say, well, you know, I know if I know people like that, right? If I know that the majority of the people are acting like that, I, I can't say that what he's saying is invalid. The only thing I can say is it's not true for everyone, but chances are it could happen, hmm. right? So not all, you know, not everybody with, you know, not everybody that's Muslim is going to, you know, blow up your plane or something like that, right? Right. Or not everybody that's Chinese eats rice. I mean, there's some Chinese people that are on the paleo diet, right? Right. Right, and then you know what the paleo diet is, Joe? Yeah, sure. Yeah, my my wife is always buying that stuff. She's, I tell you, you know, what? she won't let me have Why? a hot dog. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, Joe, hey, Joe, you know what? a paleo diet would be like murder to an Italian. <laughs> right, I know it's tough right? for me. You know, <laughs> there'd be no no all the pasta, all the yeah. all the bread. Oh, oh spaghetti alla oh, bolognese. You got me the no. Porpicieri, you know, uh, one thing that's of, of interest also, and I, I, uh, th th I read this many years ago, and I hadn't thought of this uh, uh, just th while you were speaking, um, is that people are under the assumption that being black is uh, d determined by the color of the skin. And that's not true. It's actually bone configuration. For example, there are people in Asia, in South Asia, that are extremely dark. I mean, as dark as Afri you know Africans are, but they have a bone structure that's what they call Caucasian. And very apparently nice. today, that's that's you're not supposed to say those things because it's very imp impolite. But I mean, it's Caucasian. For example, you'll find there are certain areas of India where people are, in fact, I mean, color-wise, bl considered black. However, their bone structure is the same as a white European, for example. They actually are Caucasian. And there are blacks in Africa that are not really Negro. They are Caucasian, but have dark skin. And uh, uh, especially in Northern Africa, where there was, there's a, a lot of interracial marriages over centuries and, and, and whatever, you know. And so... Um, People just assume that because you're dark skin, you're black. If you're light skin, you're not. That ain't the case. Hmm. Well, I was. I mean, I agree with with what you're saying as far as I think that it comes down to where you are. Um, the the different and from my research and from what I've read and known, uh, the different phenotypes. We're, we're talking phenotypes here. Of what a person appears to be on the outside. For right. example, I'm a I'm 11 percent European. Yeah. Okay. So somewhere down the line, <laughs> there was a, there was a white man or woman. Okay. Somewhere, somewhere. No, I should say up the line, right? And, right. <laughs> and based on my mother's last name, we've traced. We've traced. Based on my mother's last name, we've traced um, our European heritage to Wales. Uh, based on the last name, it, it's it's a Welsh last name. Wow, good. And, I was wondering where your name came from. I'm glad you mentioned yeah. that. Yeah. Right, right. Now, African Americans in America have a very, from what I know, you know, um, a very sometimes unrealistic expectation to identify someone or something as black. The African American experience, see, in my eyes. African American people are Americans that have mixed racial ancestry. They have ancestry from Africa and may or may not, but generally speaking, have ancestry also from Europe too. And even a smaller percentage Native American, but but basically Europe, European and African blood. So in my in my view, because I've traveled the world, I see people as Americans, people who adhere to the American culture as Americans that come from all different walks of life, shades and blah, 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 right? Now, African-Americans tend to have a, a conflict when it comes to color and culture. There's, I'm sure you've heard of the brown paper bag test. Have you heard of brown paper bag test? Yes, I have. And, and there is a very elite group and you have to be lighter in skin than a brown paper bag in order to belong to this elite group, black group. 
Right, right. Well, well, actually, and also, correct? is that well, correct? Yeah, yeah. That's what well, that, that's also part of it because we have families like the Proctor families and Plummer families in in in, in the uh, in Washington D.C. here. But that's part of it. But the, the main thing was in order to in order to in order to be marketable, in order to work at a restaurant or an establishment that was considered, you know. You know, to get a good job there, you would have to be lighter than a brown paper bag. Okay, but there's okay. also a school that will not accept um, blacks that are, you know, that they have to pass the black brown paper bag test. And I forgot what school it was. It's in New York, I believe, mm -hmm. and it's only for the what they call the they reference the elite blacks. And if you are if you don't pass the brown paper uh, bag test, you're not accepted. I mean, it's the most discriminatory thing you've ever seen in your life, and yet that is the black community discriminate, discriminating against themselves. Yes, but here's the thing. The black community is not really a community in a sense that there are a given, it, it doesn't have a given code. Like, okay, like I was saying the brown paper bag test, right? And then there's the one drop rule. These are two conflicting issues of blackness because a black person will look at, like here's one, What's that woman's name? She is just terror. What's that? What's that woman's name? She's the one who called. Um, she's the one who called Ben Carson a coon. Who's that? What's her name? Do, does Althea that Butler. Althea Butler. That okay. was her name. Okay. Althea Butler. Althea Butler called Ben Carson a coon, right? And she, but she, but she uplifts Obama. Okay. Now, Obama, Obama, and this is what I told a lot of African Americans. Obama does not follow the main, the the liberal narrative of African Americanness. That he that he supports as far as the platform is concerned. Okay, I'm not even going to get into how he didn't even go to the Congressional Black Caucus and sent Joe Biden in his stead, or whenever the black people need him, he sends someone else like Hillary, right? But but yet and still, but yet and still, they wear the shirts, change and all that stuff like that, right? right? But they don't know this guy. He says, "I already got you. I don't need to do anything for you. Where are you going to go, right?" So I'm, I don't want to get too much of a tangent. I try to tell people, black people, you need to like kind of like vote Republican and Democrat, so you can have like kind of like a voting economics, yeah. so people want to do something for you. But Obama's, but Obama's father was from Africa, Kenya or something. He wasn't African American, so his culture is not African American culture, and his mother was European American. So his narrative is not like Ben Carson, who came up with a single mother. He came up in a rough area. And he rose up to be a neurosurgeon. This is the narrative that black people say, well, you know, you can be whatever you want to be. You can come up from the bottom. And now, you know, we came from the bottom. Now we're here. Right. We came from the bottom. Now we're here. You know, like, you know, that's a song, but you don't know that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's a song. Look it up. Look it up. Go on YouTube and say, we came from the bottom. Now we're here. Look that up. But anyways, yeah. this brown paper bag test, a lot, some, so some black people will say, well, you know, well, this person is, uh, uh, you know, they hate themselves because they're light skinned black and and you know They're not really black because they're light skinned and then on the other hand When they want like there's a rapper. Okay, let me just give you a quick example There's a rapper who's like my color or a little bit tiny bit lighter than me He his girlfriend or or fiance is uh, is mixed uh, half black half European half African half European and African-american women are berating this guy and saying He's a self-hater. He should have a dark-skinned girlfriend, right? But then the same camp of African Americans will turn around and try to claim a mixed black celebrity, like Heinz Ward or Tiger Woods. You know, they're like, "Oh, Tiger Woods is black." Okay, he's black, right? To you, he's he's he's. You're trying to say he's African American. So you're saying that based on the one drop rule, which was given to you by slave masters that you fully embrace that Tiger Woods is black or African American. What you mean is African American because I make distinctions between black and African American. Right, right. Right? Because like those Indians you were talking about, they're black. I've seen Indians blacker than me. Right, right. They're that's black my color. Po that's my point right. about bone, bone structure more right. so bone than structure color. And culture. Yeah. And culture. Excuse me, can, can I ask you to hold on to that thought because we are late. I'm getting bad oh. vibes from everyone in the studio uh -huh. we need to break from for just a one minute station identification would you hold that thought and we can continue it in one moment would you do that bobby okay. for me okay so how many how many how many seconds do i have what you got uh, all right you want to finish your, your your thought 
on this? No, I just want to run to the bathroom. Oh, yeah. Well, you have a minute and 30 seconds, okay? okay go for right. it. All right. Folks, don't go away. Uh, our telephone number is 646-652-4620. I know that people have been waiting to ask a question, but we had a long dialogue. Some people already hung up. Please do call in. Dial again. 646-652-4620 right after our break. Please don't go away. Stay with us. All right? We'll be right back. You're listening to Liberty Talk Radio. Political talk derived from a historical perspective. Not always palatable, but good food for thought. Pure libertarian talk with host Joe Cristiano. LibertyTalkRadio.com Express Test is your go-to company for on-site occupational health testing services. That's right. We sit on-site. That means we will meet you at your facility for a free health and occupational safety consultation. Express Test specializes in hearing conservation, respiratory protection, and employee safety. We can help you establish viable programs tailored to your business and employee needs. For your free consultation, call 918-743-2929 or visit us at expresstest.com. That's 918-743-2929 or expresstest.com. Do you find yourself asking, what did you say? Aaron Cristiano of Ranch Acres Audiology has over 25 years of experience helping patients just like you. Hearing requires conservation. We need to be aware and we need to be responsible for our own hearing health. Understand more with a little help from Ranch Acres Audiology. Call 918-749-7711. That's 918-749-7711 to learn more. Steve Harden of the Harden Insurance Agency has over 30 years of experience designing family insurance protection, including retirement planning. Call 918-488-0024 or go to hardenagency.com and request a free in-depth estate and retirement evaluation. We look forward to earning your trust and helping you meet your life goals. This isn't your typical talk radio show. This is Liberty, Liberty Talk Radio. Welcome back, everyone. This is Joe Cristiano. Uh, you're listening to Liberty Talk Radio. With us today, we're pleased to have Bobby uh, Senora. He's the author of uh, Black Names book, and uh, we're discussing um, and, uh, the effect that black names have on 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 people, you know, especially people of uh, African-American descent or partially of African-American descent, and why they persist on using those names rather than assimilating into society. Um, we, we already know that uh, t- uh, there have been uh, tests performed or studies performed, I should say, not tests, but studies, whereby um, if you have certain names, it doesn't have to be a black name, it could be any unusual name, it does somehow subtract from the, your ability to attract a job. And so, in fact, in his book, the black names book he has a picture of an employment application and um he has a black name and quite frankly uh, it's do uh, do amanisha i think I'm, I'm pronouncing that it's <laughs> obamanisha okay thank you very much for that you know it's and, obamanisha and a, oh obamanisha <laughs> do obamanisha okay the obama names the obama names when he got elected they became popular so people started naming their kids Barakisha, oh Barak, oh uh, my Obama Nikwa, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, and 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 and, it's, and what's funny is that he's he's not pure African American either, and of course there's a big reject thing on it because statistically it's been shown. Just like when you go for a job, if you uh, if the company, the person who is hiring you identifies with you. And you try to identify with the culture of the company, whatever it may be. For example, if you went for a job as a programmer for Apple, most likely you would wear relatively casual clothing. If you w- w- went to Wall Street and wanted a job in a financial firm, you're going to wear, you know, very conservative tie and a, and a suit. And uh, not doing so just lessens your chances. And it has nothing to do with um, uh, discrimination. It has that's that's the way life is. You know, you have to. You have to be part of that team. They want people on their team that's going to work for them. Anyway, uh, what I wanted to uh, uh, ask you about is I've always been concerned with the term Black Lives Matter because, quite frankly, that makes no sense to me at all. What makes sense to me is the term Black Character Matters. And I don't know why they haven't adopted 
my suggestion rather than black lives matter because as a, the retort to that is all lives matter every single life is matters i don't care where you're from who your parents are or where you live it makes no difference and unfortunately our government doesn't look at it that way because we'll bomb the bejesus out of people kill innocent men women and children because we suspect there's a terror somewhere so even our government doesn't subscribe to that because they don't care who they kill provided they can sell a few more bombs as far my as far as i'm concerned but but in the context of black lives matter why hasn't someone in the african-american community or people who represent the arab american community said guys you've got it wrong it's black character matters and that and the only way you build character is within yourself not from some sort of external influence it's internal and not external am i barking up the wrong tree or do you disagree with me or what so first of all this is liberty radio right it's a free goddamn country. Yeah, right. And you should be able to have your own views. <laughs> you know, I don't care. You know, people say, oh, that's racist. Oh, that's sexist. Yeah, I, I Check don't... your privilege. <laughs> Check your privilege. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you know, you know, Martin Luther King said it himself, content of your character. Yeah. Yeah, let me tell you about Black Lives Matter, man. It's a farce. Let me tell you why. Because when Quintavion goes and blows Jamal's head off because Jamal stepped on his shoes, black lives didn't matter then. You know what I'm saying? See, here's the thing. There are, there's certain propaganda, there's a certain message that the media wants to send. Have the black people been shot with police? There have been, but they, didn't, they don't really go into, see, I saw through the whole Trayvon Martin case. I saw right through it. And when I first saw it, when I first heard it, it was pumped a certain way. And they brought out the picture of the guy, Zimmerman, and they brought out the picture of Trayvon. And Trayvon was like looking like some innocent, like, you know, um, like he was in middle school or something like that. He was a, it was a young picture. It wasn't a new picture. He was a big kid in all reality. And then they put a picture of the dude when he was like bigger and he had more weight in his face. And they sent those two pictures next to each other. And then they said, a white guy killed a black guy for where for he didn't know him, right or something like that like it was some something really ambiguous and at first i was like whoa wait a minute are like white people killing black people in mass no because when when i go through the inner city i'm not worried about a white person killing me right <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i'm not you know what i'm saying like i mean no i understand like, yeah you know what I'm saying? Yeah. right so anyway so then later on you start to find out little things about the case you start to find out that there was a fight you start to find out that George Zimmerman was actually half Latino. See, now they didn't say that. Do you know why? Because it would kill the liberal narrative. Right. Yeah. It would kill the liberal narrative. You see, there was a uh, okay. So let me finish that real quick. So there, there was that. You found that out. Then you found out Trayvon wasn't really that little kid that you saw in the picture. Essentially, from what I get and from the evidence that I saw, I I saw that there was a guy in his neighborhood that was a little gung ho about policing his neighborhood when he wasn't an officer okay he followed this kid around the, the neighborhood the kid got irritated he's like you know i could beat this guy up like yo what like get away from me like actually think about it like someone will, you know there are people made story, songs about this they're like yo you know stop following me man stop following me, man yo, yo. and then he then trayvon commenced to beating him up and then when trayvon got the upper hand in the fight then the guy's like you know i'm not i'm gonna you know i'm gonna like this guy could beat me to death so he pulls out a gun and shoots him you know, this is what I get from it. See, and what people don't see is the rule of law in that sense. They don't see that that the fact that the guy was following him or whether they instigated a fight didn't matter. In a in a stand your ground state, it is the threat of bodily harm that justifies use of deadly force. The guy was in danger of you know getting killed by being beat to death. People think you know you can't be beat. You can be beat to death. Right. Right. So it's, I mean, you know, I've studied the martial arts and I continue to. And, you know, that is something that's preached, like get in and get out, you know, one hit kill, get in and get out, you know, like, and this is, and this is just using your hands. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, can I interrupt just a second? Yeah. We, we've, uh, 
We've had people hold on the line that wanted to ask yeah, a question. Yeah, sorry. Could we take sorry. it now just for a second? I don't want to lose it yeah, again. Yeah, okay. yeah, you, yeah, line definitely, line definitely. two, you're on the air. Your question, please, and your first name. Hello. Hello. Caller, you, yes. you're on the line. You're on the air. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Your first name, please. This is Jim. Jim, thank you very much for calling Liberty Talk Radio. Your question or comment, please. All right. Well, first of all, I got on a little bit late, been listening for about a half an hour, and uh, this has just been one of the more uh, fascinating and uh, enjoyable pro programs for a long time. Bobby, I really like the, the things that you've, that you've said. Um, I, I need, uh, I need a, another black friend. Will you be my friend? Yeah, man, we can be friends. <laughs> Follow me on Facebook. Follow me on Facebook. Now, now, yeah. now ask him for now. I, I, I call, well, I Jim, do, Jim, ask him Facebook, for money now. You know. <laughs> yeah, do, do you, do, are, are you on LinkedIn? Uh, well, I'm, I'm in. Fa I'm on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn with my um, with 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 my well, my Facebook name is my author name. My link my LinkedIn name is my is my government name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is which is like which Wait, is you my last that name. and that and that is C A O H. It's like calcium hydroxide. C A O H is the last name of you know is the government name. So find me on LinkedIn. Right. Did you get that Joe? I, did, I I don't know if I got that correct. Anyway, okay. I guess it is just so refreshing to hear, to hear Bobby, what you're saying. C A O H. If you want to find me on LinkedIn, if you want to find me on LinkedIn, gotcha. right, but I don't say right, that, write I don't that down. C O A H. Right? No, 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 no. C A. C A. O H. Oh, yeah. Okay, oh, we got you. But I don't, I don't say or do the same things on LinkedIn that I do on Facebook. Okay. Just like All how right, Joe well, and I were talking I'll, about. I'll right. So I'm I'll, not gonna. I'll, 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 I'll take what I can get. In, I, I, I in, any, in any event, it, I was, I was going to say you, you, you touched a little bit. Uh, I touched a little bit on. Uh, well, first of all, I love how we can, uh, like I said exercise our first amendment and not worrying about being so pc and we, we've been talking about you know anytime you uh you bring up race it, it can be a real sensitive subject and i like how you're you confront these issues uh head, head on it's really refreshing but i just wanted to ask you were touch, talking a little bit about obama earlier uh as, as obviously you've uh, have studied and know a little bit about his mixed ancestry and i'm just i've always been i always wondered why the why the uh, black community has just had unwavering support and, and, and love for this guy when he really isn't one of you, one of the brothers, and uh, then you can question whether his policies are in the best interest of, of the African-American community as well. Uh, just any, any, any thoughts on, uh, on, uh, on, the, on that topic? Well, I, I mean, first of all, I would like to say, yeah, thanks for your comment, and um, definitely do find me. I really want you to find me on Facebook because I'm more wild there. Um, it's the same reason why they they went after Ann Coulter for uh, they try to call Ann Coulter racist because she said that Herman Cain was more of a was uh, how she said Republicans uh, it was something along the lines of Republicans um, blacks black Republicans are being discriminated against against black people he, she said that Herman Cain was more of um, more black than Obama okay. Black people were calling her racist, but I sat and I said, "That's true. That's true." Because Herman Cain, yeah, in, in, in all in all actuality, Herman Cain has two black parents, right? Mm -hmm. Obama doesn't. Okay, and Obama's father isn't even American. So what I'm what I'm right. trying to say with this is that as far as being a part of the black culture, right? He's he, he's got that swag. See, he's got that swagger. He's got that talk. He's got that gab. And then other African Americans don't really know where they're going to go. Like, where are they going to go? Like, no one looks like them, you know. And so I think that they're they're looking at themselves more as I mean, more as um, a a group that they need to support someone from their group because having a black president is a milestone. And this versus what issues the person is actually going to look after. I was waiting for a long time for Obama to start. Uh, you know, exercising what he could exercise because people were like commenting about, oh, well, you know, Congress wouldn't let him do anything, but he did have pardon power. I mean, he if he really wanted to affect if he really wanted to affect change in the black community, he could have investigated some yeah. of those cases yeah. in the Department of Justice that had to do with black people in states where you know there there was questionable the evidence or the DNA evidence was questionable. They could have been it could have been a race issue. He could have just sat down and stopped traveling. He said, okay, you know, I'm going to take this month for black people because black people supported me and put me in office. 
and I'm gonna look through all these cases, and I'm gonna just I'm gonna look at through all these cases where it's questionable, it could have been racial, and then I'm gonna start pardoning these people or whatever it is, or I'm gonna have a review of these cases. He has power over that. That's right. one way because black people are incarcerated at a higher rate, just like men are incarcerated at a higher rate than women. You know, in my other books, I also talk about the new um, the new feminist machine as well. Um, but staying on topic, this is the reason the reason why it's the same reason why they yell about racism when there isn't any. It's called own group preference, and this is how humans have survived for millennia. And Oh, and actually, because he doesn't, because the black identity is a mixture of things, it's how you look on the outside, how you dress, how you speak in your culture, your quote unquote culture, they would consider black guys like me or Herman Cain or or uh, or um, Ben Carson as not black because we don't uh, subscribe to the mainstream liberal narrative, even though my skin is as dark as night. Right. Do you ever get called? On, do you ever get called an Oreo? No, I haven't gotten called an Oreo, um, not yet. Okay, good. But, but, <laughs> but then, but if someone called me an Oreo, you know what I would say? I would say thank you very much. You know what? <laughs> I would say I would say thank you very much because 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 I'm a I'm a race realist. I'm a race realist. Yeah. Racism occurs because racism is a name that we give it its own group preference in our country. In African countries, they have own group preference. There's ethnic cleansing in African countries, right? One tribe will kill another tribe because they're different, right? So in those yeah. in those countries, because you're all you know African Americans, some of them they romanticize Africa. They think that if they go back, I'm not saying all of them, you know, I'm saying a lot of them, a lot a lot of them, a lot of pro blacks, they think if they go back to Africa, that everything will be fine and dandy, akuna matata, you know. They, ha they don't have any infrastructure. They don't even have any practice building an infrastructure in the United States. So if they go to Africa with that, with thinking that everything's going to be okay, they're going to be another group that another ethnic group can walk all over because they don't have the infrastructure. They don't have a set code or a set. They don't, they're not ready to build a nation. They are Americans. And that is the, that's the heartstrings that pull on a lot of African Americans. They're Americans. And there's nothing that they can do about it. That's interesting. Right. That's just sync point. Yeah. Well, I, I, I've enjoyed enjoyed so much hearing you talk. Uh, I'm going to check check you out on uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, and uh, uh, keep keep up keep keep keep, uh, keep up your efforts because there needs to be an awakening of these uh, of these racial issues. So uh, again, en enjoy listening to you. I'll, I'll hang up now and Thanks. listen to the rest of the program. Thanks. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. Um, uh, folks, uh, we're not going to take any more calls because we only have about three or four minutes to go, and I'm afraid we're going to oh, run man. over. Yeah, but can't take it's, more fall, Joe. time flew by. You know, Joe, pa Joey Popcorn's got a lot of things to do today. You know, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Anyway, um, now I'm, I'm I'll be 73 years old soon, so you know, though. Wow. Yeah, when I when I talk back when I talk back of the old days and doo wop and whatever, I'm talking you know 1950s and. Uh, uh, wow. uh, I, I don't care to watch television, but I, I do watch anything that has to do with the old days. I like to watch uh, Oak, uh, Street Outlaws where they drag straight drag race in the street because that's what I used to do in the 1950s oh, with wow. the old Mercs and <laughs> stuff like that. You were, you, were listening, you were listening to Crocodile Rock, weren't you, Joe? Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> right, yeah. In fact, the Harlem House was on 125th Street about uh, six blocks just um, west of me. And of course, all the big names went there anyway. But it, that's a long time ago. Um, but I always tell I, hey, Joe. You know, what I always tell people what I, I tell people a few rules if you want to know you're in the hood. Okay. If you go past if you go past 99th Street, you're in the hood. Ah. <laughs> it's 99th Street, Manhattan. 100 is Harlem. Yeah. If, that's right. if the place that you live in has the name Heights after it, <laughs> you are in the hood. Okay. <laughs> If the place that you're in is named after a cigarette, like Newport <laughs> News, Upper Marlboro, you know what I'm saying? Salem, you are in the hood. Okay. <laughs> That's great. Well, you know, uh, uh, one time I was at a party. We, I got a couple. I'm going to give you the last minute. I'm going to take this one minute to tell you a story. I was with my uh, friend Butch, and, and that's not his real name, but everyone called him Butch. Um, and uh, 
and um, w- he was the, um, the alto in our singing group at the time. And we went to a party, and it was um, in in up Manhattan. I I don't recall exactly which right upper upper middle Manhattan. I don't recall exactly where it was. And we got lazy. We said, well, let's take the um, the, the the subway home. But the um, West Side subway was one block closer. So lazy us, we decided to go through a, a predominantly black neighborhood. Well, there was a lot of racial wars going on at the time and dumb us two white guys walking in the middle of the night one o'clock in the morning walking through a black neighborhood the entire black neighborhood they they were out in the street and the entire neighborhood came around and actually surrounded us and never forget my friend butch said let's run and i looked at him i said do you think we're gonna outrun these you know just think of these guys you know we're half drunk you know we're gonna ride when we're in shoes we're not in track shoes you know and or sneakers and uh, at the time so um i said well just do me a favor i said just follow my lead just follow my lead don't ask any questions and and there was a group it must have been about 25 guys there you know and i i knew we were gonna die i really thought we were gonna die and i actually walked into the group and almost pushed the guys and then i pointed at a guy and i said you sing for the rendells I made that up, by the way, you know? Mm-hmm. And the guy went, no, what do you mean? You know, he said, don't, oh, you're the tenor for the Rendells. Well, the guy did sing, and he was a tenor. And oh. and he w- and I said, well, come on, guys. Let's get together and let's sing something, you know? And they're all, you know, he didn't want to kill us, you know, not kill us, but they want to beat us up or something, I guess, you know? And and all of a sudden, they're confused, and, and I'm, I'm told, let's sing, you know? And, and they didn't know what to do. And, well, they got four guys together, and they were fantastic. They were so good. I thought to myself, if I was only 10 years younger and had some money, I would be managing these guys. That's how good they are. Now, I sang with them after a while. You know, they sang a couple songs and I sang tenor, you know, but I couldn't match these guys and we left the best of friends. Yeah, that, I mean that's. I, all, the I, I, that's what I thought, I thought you guys. Story. I thought you. I thought you guys were gonna bust out in some doo wop song and stuff. That's, and that's, like, that's exactly what we did. But, but but my point is, we left the best of friends. Yeah, I mean, yeah. from from being, you know. You know, I don't know what they were going to do. They may not have done anything, but let me tell you, when right. it's in the middle of the night and you got 25 guys coming around, and um, you know, uh, someone just put up a, 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 a placard that said, "You, you, you, you just created West Side Story," and I guess that's true. <laughs> and, and and it came around, and I thought this would be my last minute on earth to having a absolutely great time, and we just hugged each other in the whole bit and went on to the West Side and took the West Side IRT and, and went home. And it was great, you know, and I, I never forget, I tell that story a thousand times. Anyway, we have one more minute. I'll leave that one minute to you to wrap things up. Okay, well, I just want to wrap things up by thanking you, Joe, for having me on here. I hope that we can do this again. Yes, please. Uh, I, would love to, I would love to have another segment with you again. Um, I have another book called Male Angst. Good. Uh, I, I talk a lot about the, um, you know, I talk about, I talk about race, and I also talk about, um, about the gender, there's a gender war going on. It's not a real war. It's it's like something made up. It's kind of like the war on drugs. It's right. made up, yeah. right? Right. There's a, there's a lot of there's a lot of social justice warriorism going on, and what they're actually doing is they're they're eutrophying the the political atmosphere. Yeah. You see, at a certain point, everything uh, everything occurs on like some kind of a laugh or curve. You know, you yeah. get you get you get social justice when you need it. Like you know, you get like the civil rights movement. You get the the, the women's suffrage. You get all these movements and things, and then it gets to a point where you start to overkill it and make everything an issue about race. You make everything an issue right. about sex. Right. And 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 then it starts to turn on itself, and it starts to make people who just like if you go around calling every white person a racist. It's like calling crying wolf, right? Right. When they're really not, then you really get white people to hate you. Yeah, right. Right. And so, <laughs> right. Right. So I want I want us to do I want us to do some segments on um, what I'm seeing in society is I'm seeing a uh, quote unquote Negro fatigue. People are getting tired of pe- black people saying racist all the time. Right. No, I agree. Well, I agree with that. That's that they do themselves more harm than good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we're we're about out of time, um, folks. Uh, w- with us, we have Bobby Centura and uh, uh, how, how do you pronounce Sinaura, this? Sinaura, Sinaura. Sinaura. Okay, thank you very much. I, I've a black names book, uh, dissecting and defining the origins of contemporary ghetto names. Get the book, no, right, please. Right get now, it's on Amazon, Joe. On, on Amazon, and thank you very much, Bobby, for being with us. And I hope you'll join thank us you. soon and keep in touch. Okay. 
I sure will. Thank you Thank very you much. So Thank much. you so much. Thank you, Sally. Bye. Bye-bye now. And, uh, folks, this is the end of today's broadcast. We'd like to thank our sponsors for the financial support, and we'd like to thank you for listening in. You can further the cause of liberty by recommending this program to your friends, and let us hear from you. Our email address is comments at libertytalkradio.com. Remember, as my wife would say, you're either allowing your liberties to be taken away or you're striving to protect them. Unfortunately, folks, there is no middle ground. Until next time, this is Joe Cristiano. You've been listening to Liberty Talk Radio. Stay well. Stay tuned.